Mm -mm. That is some cold-blooded doucheness. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for episode three of Supernatural season seven. We're already in that weird spot where two episodes in, we have resolved a fairly decent cliffhanger within 10 minutes, and then we go on to a Monster of the Week episode. I've just been getting this little bit of a theory that the reason why that they burned down Bobby's house is that the location itself wasn't going to last anymore. They had to sell it off because that Bobby's whole, the whole junkyard, the whole scrap metal place that's there has been long gone. So a little part of me wonders that maybe they lost that area. They had a different story idea, but they had to rewrite it due to losing the location. That can happen. Like, no joke, that can actually happen in film. All of a sudden, the location can all of a sudden just disappear from use. There are so many locations and whatnot being used by so many different films right now that a lot of people are fighting over the same area. But in this story, it falls back on Sam going after this old monster that he sort of hunted while at school who turned out to actually be the do uh, the mother of a girl that he met at school. This is pretty much the most lazy contrived sort of relationship but it actually was kind of interesting showing that humanity side that we like about Sam, the one who's able to find that resolve, that human attachment to a monster, much like how he did with the vampires back in season two. So, the fact that Dean is so hell-bent on Disso not uh, listening to his brother and full, pulls on a full dick move, it kind of really contrives with the episode itself. I liked how it started, I liked that pace, and then it completely just dies. It's trying to show Sam is, is kind of struggling with how he's affected in the world and his whole being a freak thing which is something that we've already dealt with and after he leaves Dean the whole hallucination thing kind of just disappears there was a pretty funny joke though about horror movies in 3d which they even say bloody valentine so I'm guessing this coincided with Jensen Ackles release of My Bloody Valentine, which actually isn't a bad horror remake to be honest. I like how the story goes, the fact that they got Jewel, uh, Jewel State from uh, Firefly. I remember it was such a big character, a big actress in this show to be used so lightly. Because uh, she's from here, she's from BC. If I'm... Just to have her killed off despite the whole moment, the whole rebuilding with Sam reconnecting that human side of him for Dean to just come in like a fucking bulldozer. I now understand why people were saying that Dean gets worse in season seven because he just cold-blooded murdered someone. Just to prove to himself his asinine theory that Sam's other shoe is gonna drop. But eventually the other shoe will drop. It always does. This all has to do with Dean overthinking Sam's mental state, much like how he was in season six. But yeah, he's worse. It took two episodes, technically three, and he's already at the same level as how he was at the end of season six, or the entirety of season six. So I get where people were coming from when this episode came up, because holy shit, he's such a fucking dick. And then at the end, he just cold blood stares at the kid like, You ever kill anyone? Well, if you do, I'll come back for you. The only person I'm gonna kill is you. Walks past him like this, with a knife in his hand. Like, that's what bad guys do! When they walk around the poor misfortunate character who is mourning the loss of that dead one, the bad guy's like, uh, 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 uh. I don't even think anything comes of this. At least from the kid. I know the kid is MIA, if I'm correct. He never comes back in the entirety of the show. I do think that the Sam's realization of what happened does happen, but don't spoil it for me because I actually can't remember. So I'm interested to see if that happens. But if we come to the end of the season and I haven't remembered it myself, remind me. I thought this episode started off well and then it went in a completely different direction. And while some of that wasn't the worst, it also just completely shows one of our main characters in the worst light possible. Like one of the most despicable lights absolutely imaginable but in the end i am going to give this episode a negative rating i'm going to give it a three out of seven because i don't like how it completely railroaded the narrative that we had going i know this is going to happen quite a lot in season seven but i was quite 
miffed that it even started with the story and then it just decided to give up on that for the remaining 30 minutes. Anyways guys, those are my thoughts about this episode. Let me see what you guys had to say. Next episode is fantastic. I think this season isn't as bad as people thought it is. I always liked it, but not love it. But honestly, way better than season 13, 14, 15. Well, I feel bad now about what I've just said. Sorry, binge watcher. We disagreed on this one a little bit, my friend. The Girl Next Door is a pretty great episode besides Dean killing Amy, which was terrible character regression. But Sam finally accepting he's a freak after years of un being uncomfortable with it and really, uh, it was really nice. And this, in my opinion, was Colin Ford's best performance as Sam. Really wish instead of the Winchesters they had a spinoff of young Sam and Dean using the good actors. That actually wouldn't have been a good, uh, bad idea. Uh, I'll admit I like Sam's freak stuff business, but I kind of feel like this is a retread of five, but I'm going to say like this all the time. I promise I'll be more relaxed in the later videos, but for now, it's the f these three episodes that really bug me when I watch season seven. I'll really give it props to the transparency of the season. First episode, I'm bored to death. Second episode, I can't take it seriously. Third episode, I know that I'm going to hate my life throughout the season. This needlessly mean-spirited and unnecessary filler showcased how Sam and Dean do not behave like the characters we know and love. See, Dean doesn't simply execute Sam's friend in front of her kid. It is unnecessarily cruel and so out of character for Dean. The fact that he knows it's wrong and yet he still does it simply shows that Sarah Gamble cared more about her cheesy monsters like Edgar than most the most bland henchmen ever that rather than our main characters worst of all they wasted jewel state same on shame on you for that yeah no i was a bit upset that they wasted jewel in this episode considering they just didn't do much with her and like could have been any other actor to have done this i i, I don't know it was a very strange choice uh jensen goes up to the bat directing girl next door you can tell he's very experimental with the camera work i love how this episode follows the events of a pre of the previous episode to maintain the tension of the leviathans although it's cheesy why the leviathans remain in human form as a standard doctor and nurse chasing the winchesters but we do learn later that why the leviathans act tactical with desertion towards humanity. I also love how the Leviathans are operating everywhere, including a credit card company that recognizes one of Sam's fake aliases. They do not take it lightly in wanting to kill the Winchesters as soon as they can and makes them more of a big bad than treating it like them, uh, treating them like the hunted instead of the other way around. I want to point out regarding their special effects, people find laughable to me to get they get the job done personally. Anyone who is a gamer who justifies outdated bad graphic games that play very uh, well understand this. The Leviathans are more enjoyable with what they represent symbolically. It's one of the reasons I love the season and put it higher than most fans. I can kind of see where you're coming from about the graphic thing, but admittedly they did just look quite dis undiscerned. Like it didn't work. Like it, there was a geometry level that when they would open their mouths, like it looked like it was wider than it actually should have been. It just what was coming out didn't make sense to what was coming. It was coming from. That was the big kind of draw away for me. As people understandably feel dissatisfied with the design choices of the monster being a kitsune, kit, kitsune? I always uh, was always a fan of episodes where we got to explore Sam and Dean's childhood, and even if the kids uh, soon don't look like it. Um, now, actually, I'll say this is definitely a better go back in time episode to their childhood than the one that season 15 gave us. Once more, we are dealing with Sam and Dean keeping secrets with Sam, with Dean killing Sam's first lover. While it makes complete sense to me why Dean killed her, it's also hypocritical considering the lengths the Winchesters have and would do for each other. How they handled the subplot in comparison with other secrets they dealt with from each other in comparison to other seasons, I honestly feel is really well done. Also, people keep expecting Amy's kid to be the one who kills Dean in the series finale is quite funny, but it is sad that the storyline for the kid is never revisited. If an And if anything, the Kitsunu doesn't look like a full-blown monster. That's just what we can expect from Supernatural from every Supernatural creature. They add physical characteristics of the creature, but maintain a humanistic, uh, humanistic relatable look. Now, I can understand that. Definitely, that's for a budget and whatnot like you you don't show the monster right off the bat one because you don't have the budget to and two it's a little bit more interesting if you kind of hide what it is however i i don't like how he kills this character i find it so out of left field i find it so hypocritical so completely against shit that's been established and literally 
no actual reason as to why. He, Sam even gives him a very clear reason, a very good reason as to what she's doing to hide herself. And Dean's like, no, I want to be right. I will always say that this episode is basically part two of the trope that Dad begins uh, in back in season five. Remember when Dad McLaughlin introduced a special character in season five that never came back and fans were hoping would in season 15? They'd finally bring him back, and they didn't. Well, there's another character that fans also wanted to return. If you go to your video where you were reading comments of the series finale, which I believe is an hour and nine minutes, at the nine minute mark, there's a comment you read where someone mentions a character from season seven who said that the only person he was going to kill was Dean when you re witnessed uh, Dean killing his mother. That is this episode. But if you think that Dean was did was bad, wait until you see what he who he kills 10 episodes later. Oh god, wait, he gets worse? Oh no. The girl next door, I totally forgot that Jensen directed this episode and he did a good job here. I'll admit, I actually totally forgot he directed it as well. I really like seeing the flashbacks of a younger Sam and Amy, Amy Jewel State did a good job playing the adult version of Amy. I really liked her and would have loved to have seen her appear in the show, but nope. Once again, another female character with good potential gets killed off. Dean totally was acting out of character here. I get that due to what happened between him and Castiel has hurt him, but he is still wrong to kill Amy. I was angry about what happened. Sucks that Jacob never appeared in the show again and was basically forgotten because it was been an interesting seeing him again. Now, to be honest, I can understand why they don't bring him back because can you imagine how on earth do you spin that to make your main character look at all as a good character? There's none. They probably did that and then a few weeks or months later they're like, holy shit, we cold-blooded murdered someone. There's no way we can bring this character back. There's no way at all. Also, we wasted Juice State. What can I say about Girl Next Door? I like the premise of the episode as a whole. However, I do have quite a few criticisms for starters. How about Dean not punching his brother in the face after having a head injury three weeks prior and having Sam's wall come down? That's actually another good point. Holy shit, the, the douche Dean points are just racking up. Here's a tip for the next time, Dean. Pick a lower extremity for this season. The second critique I have concerns with is the whole situation between Sam, Dean, and, and with Amy. I get where both of the brothers are coming from, but Dean has more of a point with trusting Sam right now considering his hallucinations of, Lu of Lucifer and able to tell what is what. I do appreciate the peril later in the Slice Girls and the first half of season eight when Benny is compared to this episode. My ranking of this episode is a four out of five, 4.5 or five out of seven. Huh. I guess I can understand kind of, but the fact that Sam does say he knows what is real and what it isn't. It's hard for, you know, someone to believe that, but when he points it out that it's something that happened to him a long time ago, when he was sane, I don't know, I kind of, eh, it's, it's a hard road to go. I, I see where you're coming from here, Lauren, though. That's probably one of the best defenses I've seen of Douchebag Dean. All right, guys, those are your thoughts. Next episode, I cannot look up the title of it right now, but I know if, if I'm correct, it's the one that has Spike in it. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are about that episode, and I will read those comments off in the next video. Anyways, that's all from me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time.